गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय शो माय चैनल दिस इज द कंक्लूडिंग पार्ट ऑफ अ सीरीज आई स्टार्टेड लाइक माय टेस्टिमोनी इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट आई हैव डिस्क्राइब्ड दिस इज सिनॉप्सिस सो इन केस यू हैव नॉट सीन दैट यू डोंट हैव टू सी इट बट इफ यू सी यू विल नो टिल व्हाट टाइम आई वाज आई हैड रिकॉर्डेड इट 20 27 मिनट्स इन दैट एंड द रिमेनिंग इन दिस सो इफ यू आर जॉइनिंग फ्रॉम हियर यू आर वेलकम टू सी दैट आई विल बी प्लांटिंग अ लिंक go to the first video and check out how i came from how i married a girl from california who came to india we met through online chatted fell in love she came to india married we married in india and then i came to united states and how i joined in california south california and how i joined the church she used to go because there was no hindu temple i was a hindu Uh, and hindus like to go to the temple and meditate and all that so there was nothing so i said i want to go to the church because hinduism doesn't have a problem with um, all people who have taught noble goodness kindness love compassion all those things and jesus i knew was a some somebody extraordinary i thought he was a britisher because <laughs> in those days our internet wasn't really in at least in my life not as much as it had it became later so i had very little information on jesus 95% of people in india are not christians so i didn't know much i thought he's a, a suit wearing britisher because he looked blonde and blue eyes and certainly caucasian so <laughs> it was not the case when i joined uh, the church and because i needed to go somewhere being spiritual and i fell in love with the doctrine of christ and i fell in love with the bible that is the synopsis of the first uh, first episode of this concluding before this the preceding video is that so now we'll pick up the story now i'm uh, connected with the, my mentor who was an elder of the church it was a nasa founded church nasa means nasa not nasa <laughs> per se but employees of nasa because it was very close to edward bays my city where the nasa a huge sprawling complex is there so these guys were working there they were getting really solid pays and they were christians who wanted the truth and they wanted uh, the verses see the lord jesus christ made sure he, as he pulled me out in hindsight it all makes sense i was pulled out of india brought here connected with a church which was staunchly polian but they didn't know that obviously they were not aware that they were uh, following the doctrine of a deceiver paul but on the flip side they had put every other thing right like they got everything right the verses the pastors or the teaching staff they had to give us the verses and they had to give us a written uh, you know paper whatever they are teaching for the day was there i don't know fly area so something they used to call that i am not bulletin bulletin right so the bulletins would tell us what is going on and what is being taught and everything going on in the church very transparent very nice church i thought i had landed at the ultimate place it was heaven for me i fell in love with christ i fell in love with bible i fell in love with everything written there and the church became my second home even my first home all right i started attending every services there were two services on sundays i attended both to get a double portion that was the passion i'm talking about 2005 6 7 but now taking it fast forward okay i've got connected i'm in bible study groups i i became an usher of the <laughs> church not knowing much about the doctrine was just delighted to meet people and if i can say with some kind of humility that i love people if they would allow me to hug or handshake whatever the case was there wasn't the, the corona virus so we would hug a little bit people just make them feel welcome and wanted there and i was told by my pastor you have a very welcoming smile so raj why don't you and of course i was an international face <laughs> to the church member with an accent and all that so it, it proves the sovereignty of jesus he sovereign the whole universe really what india what america what africa is sovereign god of all everything the father and son are one right john 10:30 that's how my story started okay of christianity by 2006 6 or 8 months after i uh, 
became a Christian or wanted to. So I asked for baptism, which they didn't offer. I, later on, they told me baptism is nothing special, which they got it wrong. Well, Jesus tells Nicodemus that to be saved, we have to be born again. Otherwise, we will not. And one of the, three, there were three requirements, all in John 3. <laughs> all are there in John 3. I, I don't remember exactly, but I know the point when Nicodemus and Jesus, he asks a lot of questions. He's from, he's a Pharisee from Sanhedrin. He's one of the better Pharisees, a good Pharisee. He had questions and Jesus answered them as always. We need faith. We need bath. That's John 3, 16. We meet, we need baptism. That's 3, 5 or 3, 7. John 3, check it out. Where he says, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you're born of the water and spirit, right? But this they discarded who? My Paulian church. You know why? Because Paul does not talk about it. In fact, he says, I was not given ministry of baptism. He was a liar. So, and Jesus says, it is paramount to be baptized. Anyway, coming back to my story, uh, they said it is an outward expression of the inner faith. I didn't understand. I was too young, uh, too naive in Christian faith and too... It was very early days, so to speak, and I was just five months as my first, uh, you know, exposure to Christianity. So I said, uh, whatever it is, if it is an inner expression, out, but I want to get baptized because I had heard that it is important. Hinduism, Hindus also have baptism. They go take us to uh, rivers, especially Ganges, which is like Jordan of uh, Israel. And it's similar, you have to get back. What is baptism? Immersion. It's immersion in waters. So I became baptized on 7th of May 2006. Okay. And within a few months of coming to United States, I got baptized and became a Christian, a proud Christian, which I am today also. But as the time flew by, I started noticing there, was a, there were huge discrepancies. There were huge discrepancies between and contradiction between Jesus taught doctrine and Paul taught doctrine. Jesus never uttered the word grace in the entire Bible. Okay. Now say it by grace. Then why is he saying on the last supper hours before he uh, ascended the cross? Why is he giving a grim reminder? If you love me, keep my... Obey my commands. If you love me, keep my commands. If you love me. He says six times, including... From John 14, 15, John 14, 21, 23, 14, 24 and two times again in John 15, I believe 12 and 10, some 15, 14 is certainly one of them that you are not my friends if you are not obeying. It's as simple as that guys. If we do not obey the Lord, we do not qualify to be his friend. Then how are we saved? And if we don't obey, he says he declares you have no love for me. So these things touched me like a tangent and went away. I was too young a Christian to understand these big things. But the contradictions and all. Then I saw that there was hardly any outreach, you know. Christians uh, ministering to Christians only. It was like the church was, it came down to this. Only this church will be saved because they got it right. We cut the word straight. We cut the word straight. What about the next door Christians? What about the Hindus? What about the Buddhists? Forget them. The next door Christians won't make it. You know why? They didn't cut the word straight. So I saw very narrow kind of thinking going on. I said, God cannot be. I had a healthy exposure to Hinduism which talks about inclusion. Jesus also did. What, what does it mean after Jews and Gentiles? Literally covering the whole gambit. Every human. Because we are made in his image and likeness. Likeness of Father God. He would like us to be saved. He doesn't, uh, you know, make differences as we humans do. Anyway, coming back, st doubts started appearing in my mind around 2013-14. And finally, when I wasn't getting the answers, now in retrospect, I am. They were talking only polyanity. That's all. As if the whole Bible was reduced to the 14 books including Hebrews of Paul and nothing beyond that. And half of corruption starts in Acts, Acts 8 onwards where Paul enters. Still that time Acts is good. We don't know who this Luke is, where he comes from. Only Paul testifies. We have no clue 
that man didn't walk a day with Jesus. He is called a physician, we don't know. All I know is he doctored the doctrine <laughs> by establishing Paul as an uh, apostle. It is Luke. There were three people involved. Guys, see some of my videos. Uh, please do check. I put a lot of information. There are 400 videos. Some of them include this. Who was this Luke? Why did we trust him? Why did we accept him? Oh, God breathe. God, uh, everything is infallible word of God. So, if there were evil people, wasn't it our job to, who included these books? Wasn't it our job? But long story short or cut to the chase, I, in my personal capacity, I provided abundance of evidence online, on YouTube, of what happened, why they were accepted, why God allows allowed Paul. Isn't he sovereign? He would have never stopped. He, that was one of the arguments I got from the Paulians. Oh Raj, don't talk nonsense. God would have never allowed if he were a fake. I said that's exactly what he was doing. He was testing us. He didn't put him there, but he permitted them. See, the ones who crucified Jesus ended up doing the work of Father God. But did God say, go and crucify my son? No, he didn't. It was a choice those guys made at the behest, at the instigation of the Pharisees who hated Jesus with their heart, might and soul instead of loving him. Paul being the Pharisee of the Pharisees, he was a big time Jesus hater. And he was involved in three crucifixions, this Paul. Let me give you the first one. These were the, it says it clearly in Matthew and other Gospels, the Pharisees plotted the death of Jesus Christ. It's very clearly written. Then they acted upon him in that kangaroo court. They are the ones who instigated the crowd. Most of that crowd are the same people who a week ago, they were shouting Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, throwing olive branches at Jesus' feet when he entered Jerusalem. I uh, get the goosebumps, the son of God entering what he created with the father, John 1. Nothing was created that was created without the son. The man who created them or the, the God of the universe is the face of Father God. He is the son of God. He and God are one, Jesus says John 10, 30. Yet Father is higher than him and Jesus always did the will of God. Remember this, if we do not do the will of God, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Remember these things which have been not taught to us. Only Paul has been fed to us. Everything has been rationalized falsely in Paul. Remember that guys, it is of highest importance we do the will of God. What does God have to do with people who do not do his will? Jesus said not one of you will enter the kingdom of heaven unless you do the will of Father God. That's John, uh, That's Matthew 7, 21 and uh, 20, up to 23. And those who kill the law of God are out. I can't teach the whole thing in one go or share everything. But we have to learn to do the will of God. Coming back to my situation, I started thinking nobody wants to obey here. Nobody wants, everybody is talking in past tense that I have been saved. In testimonies uh, in the churches, I was saved when I was 15. I was saved when I was 18. I was saved when I was this. I said, so you have all been saved and the judgment hasn't occurred. Jesus talks about judgment again and again. Then why is he even judging us if you have already saved? Who's? I didn't realize it was Paul behind all this. I didn't know the guys. So this is my dilemma. Finally, I said bye-bye to the church. I said I can't. If children are being condemned, little children, because they come from a third world country, a poor country. Nowadays they have one of the highest number of billionaires also. But on the other side of the spectrum, we have some of the poorest people who live in uh, ghetto-like places. They live in slums. Slums is what they call them, not ghettos. I apologize. I beg your pardon. So they live in slums. The quality of life, only God understands how difficult. And those little children who do not know Jesus, suppose seven-year-old, six-year, forget them, hope anywhere in the world dies without knowing Jesus. What happens to them? Oh, they are condemned. Really? I said, really? I started asking those, the elders of my church. Where do these children go? Because Paul says one life and then one death and then judgment. Then says Raj, we didn't make the universe. He did. It's his laws. 
I said then I don't want to uh, worship a heartless God. I will not stay here. You didn't give me an answer. When you give me an answer, this is way after I became. And I got disenchanted with Christianity. Completely, I stopped having great regards for Father God with due humility, I am saying. Not realizing it was Paul behind all this. He wanted this to happen. That we start thinking of God as a spaghetti monster. But unless you believe in me, all I'll do is dump you in hell. Dump you and dunk you into that lake of fiery lake. <clears throat> There's full of brimstone. Fire and brimstone. That lake. Lake of fire. So I said, I don't want this religion, this faith, bye-bye. After a stint with, of 10 years, 11 years, I quit Christianity almost completely in 2015 or 2016 and I went back started reading uh, Buddhist uh, Buddha Buddha also comes from India his texts because they talk more about uh, compassion and all I said this is I'm not this is not except I, his name is Larry but I won't give you his last I said Larry this is not acceptable to me that will be dumped into hell. So the Raj, I, he was right from his standpoint. He didn't know Paul was a devil. Anyway, now you know why I left. But in 2016, the Lord had compassion on me. Because in his mind, he said, he didn't leave me. He left Raj Sahu because of the doctrine that is being taught. He didn't for, forsake me as I forsook him. He did not forsake me. He pulled me back by my ears and I started missing Jesus. I'm so in love with him. Even though I don't approve his doctrine that we know now is Paulian doctrine and the people who taught me first 12 verses were, were all of Paul. They wanted to uh, what is the word shall we use? Poison me with his texts his verses so that I remember only Paul when I remember Bible I should only read or why would all of them be why not John 3.36 when uh, John the Baptist issues a strong, staunch and stern warning whoever believes in Jesus is saved this is just 20 verses below the famous John 3.16 and John the Baptist is saying whoever believes in Jesus is saved but whoever does not obey the wrath of God remains on that person. They don't teach us. They started cherry picking. Who? Our churches. They started plucking out only cherries of whom? Paul. And they made their doctrine and fed us. And I got fed up. <laughs> they fed me so much of Paul I got fed up but not knowing. This becomes now very interesting. When he pulled me back, I said, Lord, I love you, but I'm not going to this church no more. He says, don't go there. He, through the Spirit, he told me, why don't you check out some online churches or like forums to be more specific. That's how I'll be dropping names now because this is what happened. I joined... A forum called I'm giving I'm being very transparent my life is very transparent guys everything I'm telling you is exactly how it happened 2017 let's go to that momentous year that is where when I had made peace with Jesus and stopped reading all this Buddha Buddha <laughs> I don't I don't like anybody but my Lord but because of this see Pollyanity or whatever that's not Christianity that's a different doctrine which was fed to us by Paul and our churches back most of, and especially my church and let's say 90 and 95 to 99 percent are the same Paul 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 was teaching rank evil he he was involved in three crucifixions crucifixion of Jesus Christ he was involved in crucifixion of father God's eternal law you know that right that he crucified father God's eternal law 
Colossians 2.14 abolished in Ephesians 2.15 when Jesus says the whole universe can crash, burn and disappear. Not a tittle, not a jot of my Father God's law can go. David, check out Psalms 119, check out Psalms 19, 7, 11. It's, it's, it's magnificent, it's perfect, it is just, it is complete. That law is the heart of God which was crucified by Paul. Apart from crucifying Jesus, like I mentioned before in that previous video, they had connived, they had had the conspiracy, the Pharisees, they were behind the arrest and crucifixion of Christ. Okay, They are the people who instigated the ones who had gone seven days back to receive Jesus as the blessed one of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Those very people instigated by the Pharisees crucified us, uh, our Lord, beg your pardon. So the Pharisees were big time haters. Paul was the Pharisee of Pharisees, he used to hate. And when he couldn't, uh, after Jesus' crucifixion when he, and resurrection, when he tried to brutalize our churches and failed, they had the conspiracy of deception. They knew this cannot be stopped. The way, praise God, cannot be stopped. Next best was, since they couldn't stop, this was fiefdom, kingdom of the devil, earth. So the best thing for them to do was, the next best was to deceive and teach his doctrine. The end result is condemnation of everybody who follows Paul. That's guaranteed. But you'll not be saved by grace. You've been saved by grace through faith and not by works lest no man may boast. It's a very cleverly crafted uh, line and hundreds of places the same thing. Say, grace, grace. Jesus never uttered the grace in Bible. You think why? You try to understand why didn't he utter the word grace in Bible? According to any of the translations we have, major translations do not. But there's one place he says, to what credit is it to you? He uses to what grace is it to you? In other words, he says, there is no grace. <laughs> if at all he talked once was karios, that word grace, is no grace. <laughs> he never mentioned saved by grace, this, that. In fact, he just mentions what to what credit. And that's why King James and all the rest of the gang and I, we, everybody used uh, to what credit. Because grace has uh, about 50 synonyms. They correctly said to what credit. So, bottom line, Jesus did not use the word grace. Never spoke it out. Also, according to any of these major translations, neither did he use it on the day of judgment. We have the last day vision in front of us. He gave it so that we are without excuse. Paulians Pauline, are in great danger of condemnation, but they do not know by attacking me and the others who are doing the same similar work. They are doing themselves no favor, no credit to them. This is a failed doctrine of saved by grace because on the day of judgment, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, uh, Revelation 20, 11, 15. Read these accounts. In fact, in Revelation, Jesus says a couple of times, my recompense is in my hand, his balance, and I shall give to each one of you according to what you have done. That's what he says in Matthew 25, 31, 46. As he started separating the wheat from the tares, also called the goat and the sheep, and only the goats who had works of loving compassion were saved. Only the good Samaritans were saved. For their altruism. Because they poured out their heart. As Jesus did for others. They reflected Jesus in their life. Through their works. Imagine Jesus sitting and doing nothing. And telling us just believe as I believe in the Lord God. That's it. Let's not pick up a single finger. Do nothing. Just believe. And sit down in our houses. Become such trees. John says. Are what? Cut down and burn. John the Baptist. The axe is on the root of the tree. Whichever tree does not, that tree does, does not bear good fruit. The works will be cut down and burned. That's exactly what Paul wanted, guys. This is my testimony and this is how I found that, uh, how one second, guys. I try to finish this in five minutes but this was important. It's pretty dramatic what all these things which led to this and I walking up away from Jesus and he pulled me back to the Christian uh, website called, now I'll give the names, christianforums.net. 
it was in the year 2017 i believe in the month of november i had stopped going to the churches because of that doctrine which we know is polian which we now know is polian did not make sense to me and i was completely completely disenchanted with the churches in those days i found out a good web website called christianforums.net where christians from different places came together to share their views and thoughts i found it quite an edifying website because nobody was judging me and nobody was trying to force me to believe certain things they were just sharing and i got a lot of edification it's true i found it quite an edifying website well initially at least there were some like me who believed we cannot be saved by faith alone since there were too many verses of christ which talked about an absolute necessity of obedience to so this group we formed a group and opposed those who would talk about sola fide doctrine sola fide doctrine or sola fide simply means saved by grace alone through faith alone in christ alone so we talked there a group with fellow believers me and some others form that we have to obey also which was a tiny group and i was part of the six seven others were including a lady her name was fran or something i don't remember nice lady there from italy speaking fluent english she had been to united states so this group we formed this group and opposed those who would talk about sola fide doctrine or justified by faith alone we wanted action we wanted obedience and works also i would often and then here comes the important part i would often wonder why the bible is contradicting itself like paul talks about faith alone and jesus talks about you are not even my disciple unless you pick up the cross deny your flesh and follow me all these are actions obeying him right so why is it contradicting himself anyway or why is the bible contradicting itself it was because of pauline text it was his heresies that's why now we know at that time nothing was clear everything was translucent misty like a fog nothing was clear anyway one fine november 2017 everything changed for me this time, this day guys anyway one fine november day a huge argument broke out on that website between my group of obedience also people needed with the faith alone group and there was a heated exchange we started hurling like storms verses upon verses upon verses they telling us look it's me and all of them were from paul almost everything from paul with the f- uh, faith alone group and there was a heated exchange of verses left right and center from both sides the argument was l- quite long and fierce it started i believe somewhere at 11 am california time it went around 3 4 in the afternoon and i was so engrossed in it that i wouldn't leave and so passionate i would also put my verses because by this time i had spent good 12 years studying the bible so i knew certain things the argument was quite long and fierce i was deeply involved in it and the guys from both sides kept throwing verses upon verses to on each other to prove each other wrong it was like a war going on there but at something happened you know when so many verses come left right center something happened i was because i was thinking bible has no end to this argument and how is it the word of god you know at the back of my mind and there is so much confusion no clarity they are putting very solid points solid from paul and we are quoting christ obedience father god obedience other prophets obedience and this they are quoting Paul and I didn't realize, and then when I saw all the verses being thrown at us, every single verse which contradicted Christ was from Paul. And then I, knew, oh, Paul is the devil in the new doc uh, in the New Testament. The back of my mind, like yours, this guy comes with a. story of conversion he is a murderer brutal murderer blasphemer he says a lot of things about himself which i have captured in a video called damning confessions of the false apostle paul check it out guys the links are there in the description section i just compiled them i didn't put any of my nothing no views no commentary i just captured and here you are after his so called conversion so that was at the back of of course that came much later than this but there was at the back of my mind you know paul was 
the author of this confusion and i said very innocently oh paul was the devil in the new testament it just it's like my soul said that or the holy spirit said that i knew that there and then it was a moment of revelation it was the high point of my life the realization that the hero look at the irony the hero of christian faith was a deceiver around whom churches have been made those missionaries they mean nothing those those seminaries those colleges they only cater to the devil guys as paul is a false apostle jesus never uttered the word paul from his mouth why why didn't any of the 12 apostles ever call him an apostle why because they were sealed at them all those twelve were appointed including matthias by jesus and his spirit all no mentioned by jesus not even in the book of revelation these guys never called him apostle he didn't the twelve didn't call paul ever an apostle or show me where not one day did he walk with jesus he was his arch rival he was a murderer blasphemer and he comes with a conversion story nobody testified to no witnesses guys it was not ratified or witnessed by any witness or any credible witness now we are exclusively relying on a blasphemer murderer's story about conversion of himself we have no proof whether he saw anything or not and he points at jesus coming back only for him saul saul and three times in the book of luke he changes the story even that is captured in one of my videos check it out the changing accounts of paul why because it never happened he had crafted it why aren't there any witnesses at least two or three should have been there credible witnesses nothing now we are in the at the risk of believing only paul the murderer blasphemer the persecutor the intense hater of jesus he didn't repent he was just told paul paul why do you he didn't repent he didn't go to jesus maybe he would have forgiven he didn't jesus came to him who is this an ananias who saw scales scales fall of this snake's eyes it comes out of the eyes of snakes the scale who is this ananias who gave his testimony paul does anybody know ananias otherwise no he was a sidekick who's this luke who's writing the gospel and the book of acts because of which paul got established as an apostle we don't know anything about luke he was preferred over peter's gospel over thomas's gospel over philip andrew these are known names they also walked with jesus from the get go from the first day till the last of his earthly stint but this man wasn't there luke or paul there was this unholy trio guys and that's how we were deceived there was this paul himself who was the major player who was taught for 3 years in arabia one on one by the devil i believe and sent who sent him back with his deceiving doct- doctrine of saved by grace through faith this was rejected totally comprehensively on the day of judgment matthew 25 31 46 where only works were uh, only only works were used or considered to save or damn a person and that too works of loving kindness the heart of god is loving kindness the heart because his love endures forever he could not have taught anything else the true message of bible was love paul comes perilously close to that when he says but he makes you read that i won't because we'll go to 60 minutes there but he makes a detour at the last minute he knows the doctrine he is very very smart because like the evil people the masterminds are very smart they are geniuses but they are evil geniuses that is what paul was an arch rival of father god and the son of god especially the son of god jesus christ 
He had he tried his best the Antichrist Paul. Why is an Antichrist? Because of this, he taught the opposite of Jesus. All this I am talking in a fast forward manner. Two thousand seventeen November. It's almost seven years completed now. It was hard toil, guys. Bitter struggle, labor to get all this information and brutal attacks entailed. It caused brutal attacks even on Christian forums dot net, where I was so popular with the ones who used to say Raj says obedience is required. Like us, he also agrees because I was agreeing. Yes, but when I said Paul is the devil, it I said very innocently. They became vicious. Oh man! Then all of them joined hands. My group, other group, and they found a common enemy, and that common enemy was me. they hounded me out of that website i was disgraced attacked injured by a combined backlash not one person came on my side i was a man with a strange name rajesh sahu from india some couple of ladies even said people from different countries are coming and teaching with strange names i apologize i have a strange name Isn't Jesus' name a little strange? Also, Yeshua bin Mashia, H Mashia, or something like that. We use the English anglicized word Jesus. His name is not Jesus, Yeshua. Anyway, they attacked me and said strange people with strange uh, doctrines from strange countries are coming and teaching us. There were racial attacks. They were there were they were so angry at me. Then I knew later on this is. Some brothers and sisters who empathize empathize with me when I started my video ministry, they said these guys have the spirit of antichrist. Who the Paulians? They get very furious if their Lord Paul is attacked. Who's the main pawn of the devil? His job was to deceive us into condemnation. With no words, we end up as barren trees. What did Jesus say? I am the vine, you are the branches. Whichever branches does not bear fruit, such branches are my father cuts off and such branches are burned he made us barren trees guys works were the works decide where we enter heaven whether we enter heaven or hell that's what the uh, two revelation account say very clearly it's all based on works what did jesus do sit in his house or what no he went up to the cross i prove i have given even the the thief on the cross why was he saved there were plenty of works he did on the cross i put a lot of work i poured out my life guys i was ready lord let me die because the pressure was so great on me of that very year i got divorced that very year uh, corona virus came that very year i had to change my residence and live alone and the spirit of god came upon me he taught me he put the try to put the loose ends together i couldn't explain how 2017 i knew but i couldn't explain beyond a shadow of doubt that paul is a deceiver to die in minutes you take me to any court a neutral court in 10 minutes i'll end the case paulians will go out with their head hanging why didn't jesus utter the word grace they have no clue why did jesus reject your doctrine of justified by faith the the court will ask the judge will ask then what are you arguing about when you have the bloody end result in front of you what are you arguing about he'll toss the window i understand law he'll toss the case out of the window a neutral person who doesn't know christianity he'll say you you guys who uh, worship jesus he himself has rejected this justified by faith alone matthew 25 31 46 revelation 20 11 15 what is going on here when you are not accepting your christ then call yourself some other religion but this is not going to draw water in my uh, court this is not this will not rather hold water in my it's cracked your doctrine is rejected doctrine you tell the paulians without knowing the and those are the people i want to as to judge not in partial ones anyway i get very excited i get very passionate for the lord i'm furious at paul i'm not mad at paulians but i steer clear of them one night 
I think it was same Christian forums dot net. We argued all night, all night, all night. I'm trying to convince them. Do you see the insanity of following Paul, a rejected doctrine? Many times they would get blown by it, but somehow they would get the Antichrist would fill them with some kind of hope of no, no, Paul is still because others believe he is. <laughs> That's no excuse. At 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, from 12 a.m. till 7 a.m., 7 hours, I, at 7 I have crashed on my bed like this. My heart was thumping. I thought it will explode and I shall die. That time the Lord's Spirit came upon me and it was furious at me. He says, you are playing into their hands of these Paulians. That is exactly what they want. And the Antichrist spirit is trying to destroy you. Look what is happening to your heart. Guys, it was literally boom, 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 boom. It was like throbbing. It is too much exertion and passion and emotion, all of it together. And I couldn't sleep. And that adrenaline or whatever you call that burst of it doesn't allow you to sleep. I said, Lord, save my life, please. Otherwise, I won't be able to help. This not that he needs my help, he doesn't need us, but he uses people. We know that whether it's Moses, whether it's the other prophets, Isaiah, everybody who uses people, otherwise, the story won't move on, it will be a boring story. Ah, he can right now say, pronounce the end of the Bible, the new Jerusalem comes down, it will come down. But he likes it to be in a sequence, he wants us to lift certain people and through them, other people. He works in a different way. From one man, Abraham, look what has happened. It's a miracle. So that's how he works. He got furious at me. What are you trying to do? He accosted me, his spirit. And I was like this, ready to die. I thought I'll get a heart attack. Seven hours. I said, I, he says, from now, you will not go to their website. If you go, you are not my child. I said, Lord, please give me sleep. I'm not able to sleep or I will die with this kind of heart thumping. The brain, there was a storm, thousands of thoughts. This was the first preliminary days of the coronavirus. At that same time, I was fighting with them. Same time, my wife uh, walked away from my life wanting divorce. All these things happened together and Jesus' teachings coming upon me. That is how I was able to share i didn't get teaching or somebody advising nothing because coronavirus lockdown and jesus took full advantage of all these things and they came together i got a one on one from christ because there was nobody no distractions of a little family two children wifey all gone was alone so i got the full and it he took one full year i started recording in february of 2021 I, by that time, I had a lot of answers. He kept giving more and more and more to solidify. Like I said, any court with humility. Ten minutes is all I will take. I've requested, I've written to BBC, I've written to CNN, nobody replies. That a big scandal is going on. There is a false apostle in Christianity. We want to have a debate. But uh, nobody replies and nobody gives any kind of uh, response. So this was pretty much the full unfolding of events, guys. This is my testimony. I moved to India from a couple of years at the behest of the Lord. Go. He says, go, Goa, says God. Go, Goa, God. Sounds similarly. With the shock I realized and you guys also... Uh, check it on Google. There is a place in Jerusalem called Goa. G-O-A-H. Only once it is mentioned in the Bible. He sent me here. There is a Christian population here. He may have some work for me or I may die. But uh, coming back to that day when my heart was thumping, adrenaline going wildly all over my brain and body in the blood. I said, Lord, if I survive today, because I thought I am dying, it was too much exertion. And that's exactly what Antichrist wants us to obliterate us. He wants to exterminate us. 
because we are we are posing his star performer, Antichrist Paul. One of the Antichrists is Paul. And John talks about. Now, look at the love of Father God. While I was praying, Lord, please, I will not be able to sleep. Please give me a chance. Don't let me die, Father. It was Father God. It wasn't even the Spirit. There's a difference between Father God and the Son. Father God is much more uh, stricter, shall we say. He means business. <laughs> Jesus is softer to us because he was on earth. Father God never was born like Jesus was. But Jesus understands us better. Father God also, he created everything. But Jesus has greater empathy for us. And he was talking to me. He was mad at me. How dare you fall into the hands of these people? Like fall to their ruse. This is all a strategy of crushing you, killing you. So Lord, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. It's, it's, you, one gets very passionate, you know. It's like Eureka moment. <laughs> Where that guy, Archimedes or whoever ran out naked. That passion takes over. I said, I won't be able to sleep, Lord. I will die tonight. I should have had a slug of whiskey. To, but your brain is so done at that time. You can't even think. Two large drinks, some music. Because drinks immediately start. I'm not here to promote drinks. But it is blessed. We know the wine and all. Boy. I didn't remember that. I kept praying to the Lord. Please, Lord, please. But in such situation, you cannot sleep because of all that the secretion of hormones, that madness going on in your brain. You know what happened? I passed out, it seems. <laughs> That's what happened. It's not funny. 7 o'clock in the morning with the sun beating on my face. My, my apartment window faced the east. And while I said, Lord, please, I can't sleep. Please forgive me. Please. He put me to sleep. You know what time I got up? Guys, 1 p.m. He gave me 6 hours. Such a deep sleep I've never had. When I woke up, I realized I haven't woken up dead. I was still alive. And here I am sharing my testimony with you. After that, I said goodbye to ChristianForums.net And when my video ministry, someday I'll talk how it started. But it is not important. He kept giving me proofs upon proofs. Like I said, in 10 minutes is all I will take. And he called all the churches. This is, I'm not being proud or anything or puffed up. But they're sitting on a, in a port with a massive hole. That's Paul's book. And I'll point out at the hole in the doctrine. 10 minutes is all I'll take so they don't come. I'm also a Christian ready to lay down my life for Jesus. Don't we need a forum to discuss? Very respectfully. In low tones, I will say, but it is written, it is written, it is written. Jesus rejected your doctrine of justification by faith. What are you talking about? In 10 minutes should be over. This is all that happened in my life. A life of failure, a life of heartbreaks, a life of rejection. That's my life. Redemption was this. Redemption was Paul, ironically. Thank you, guys. I pray a lot of blessings on you. I pray a lot of blessings on your family. May the love of Father God come upon you through the Son of God and His Spirit which will give all of us wisdom and understanding that we may follow Jesus as He said, If you love me, you shall obey my commands. John 14, 15 God bless you all.